I'm Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! You got space, man, huh? No, actually, I'm a plumber. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. Hi everyone, you're watching the Wrestle Rock Podcast Season 5. I'm Johnny D and I representing this podcast with my partner Benoit, aka Nostradamus. Ben, how's he going today, my friend? Uh, Fine, and you? Yes, I'm going super great, super great. It's always a pleasure oh, uh, for uh, doing this with you me since too. three years ago, so... Yes. You know what? Uh, the Chainsaw Massacre? Yes, of course. But do you remember a um, couple of months ago, we received a guy called Tony Myers. And the guy was uh, the antagonist of uh, a corporal uh, Krishner. Yeah, and, the, uh, yes. the new letter face. Yes, the new letter face. And... Do you know... Uh, in season we, two. Yes, in season two, but uh, we discover a wonderful person. I'm talking about uh, uh, Paige Collette, uh, the, um, the Black, the Black Dahlia. Dahlia, and uh, we have her uh, for a couple of minutes, and you know what? This girl is very sick. Awesome, because... Um, she wants uh, to uh, share her talent, but also she loves uh, our movie, of course. But uh, so. she she have uh, an interesting talent, and she is the chainsaw queen, and um, that that's perfect because uh, when I'm I'm. I, I I spoke just before about Tony Meyer. Yeah. We recently uh, saw her um, as a, a letter girl. Yes, with uh, the, um, the, the 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 son of Letterface, Evil Nate. So yes, uh, yes, that's super awesome. So give it up for uh, Dahlia Black. As you going to that? Hey guys, thanks for having me. Uh, sorry no for being a little late. Uh, no you guys problem. Are... No problem. We know that you are uh, actually uh, super busy with a lot of wrestling convention because we we discovered you during the the wrestling con this year, and uh, that's awesome. And after Which that, one? Which one uh, did you guys see me at? Like, was it WrestleMania? Uh, we yeah exactly during the the WrestleMania weekend there there's a lot of people right there and yeah uh, that's awesome because that's a perfect weekend for uh, discovering person and a yeah. new talent so uh, here we go with uh, the beautiful Dalia so uh, go ahead with the first question my friend okay uh, I start the the question no yeah problem. Jay, just really quick I don't mean to be rude yeah. to interrupt but I love your guys's accent. Ah, oh, thank, thank you, you so much. Yeah. It's super appreciated. And I hope that you understand um, what we're saying because uh, yeah, that's not... Yeah, your English is good. Your English okay. is good. I understand uh, you. Yes. But oh, also, you so like, I have such a boner for uh, the French accent, though. So, oh. like, I'm really paying attention to it. So. Oh, thank <laughs> you so much. It's super appreciated. I, I would uh, literally take both of you and keep you. <laughs> 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 all right uh, okay yeah. all right how old have you been interested in professional wrestling and mrs page okay so i was not oh my god you guys gave me the big screen now i can actually see shit <laughs> ah, are we allowed to cuss on this pod yeah you're perfect Wait, go back go oh, back you're, 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 i want to see me all right. <laughs> Guys, like, listen, we're filming this in the morning. I don't even got my eyelashes on. I want to 
see how I look. Are the boobs even? If my boobs are lopsided, you need to fucking tell me. <laughs> tell me. Don't be an asshole and let me do a whole entire podcast with things like, uh, like that. Yeah, you're so totally perfect, you know. <laughs> yeah, just be respectful. Yeah, be like, we hey, are very you, really respectful. You. Yeah, we're very hey. gentlemen, you know. Okay, so guys, this is yeah. a good look. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> Am I allowed to take my medicine on your podcast or no? Sorry? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, take it, take it. Take it, take it. Take it. Take it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so back to the question. Yes. Uh, you want that I repeat? Oh, oh yeah. you want me to answer? I'm going to yeah. answer it now, I promise. I have the answer. <laughs> okay. No and action. So. Action. So uh, I got involved with wrestling when I was 18 years old. I, okay. I, I never watched it before. I never was like a fan. I never, you know how like the cliche uh, story, whenever you interview us wrestlers, you hear that, oh, I was in diapers watching wrestling. Oh, I, mm -hmm. I watched it as a baby with my grandma. Okay. That, nice. That, that wasn't, that, that was Nathaniel's evil Nate story. Mm -hmm. But me... I grew up, I was in diapers watching the black and white films, the okay. silent films. Like I, okay. I, I was brought up, I, uh, to perform in dance classes, you had to be like, this was like the nineties. So you had to be like the age of four to enroll in dance classes. Like I think the mm -hmm. age limit was like four to five and I had an elder sister, Pilar. So, um, uh, I was two years old and I, I gotta okay. be in the classes. You know, technically, I was a part of the dance classes. So okay. I grew up with jazz, tap, ballet, okay. dance. I grew up with okay. silent films. Like my, like a lot of people ask me, "What's your favorite horror movie?" And they're like, "Texas Chainsaw Massacre," right? And it's like, actually, that's number two. That my makes number sense. one is actually Nosferatu's from the 1920s. Like, yeah, I grew up watching the silent films, and so when I got involved with wrestling. It actually was as an actor doing a ballet job. Okay. okay. Yeah. And uh, it says uh, on your Facebook page that you were trained by uh, Funaki and uh, Rocky. She tell us uh, about uh, your uh, wonderful experience because I imagine right. that's what was a uh, well, very cool with uh, with them. A thousand percent. Uh, so, like when you go to college, you want to get enrolled into like Harvard or Yale, mm -hmm. you want to go to the main, uh, the, you want to go to Juilliard uh, yeah. as an actor, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, New York Film Academy. I, so whatever you want to do, you want to be the best of the best. And when I got involved with wrestling, I wasn't a fan. I was doing it to stand out because I actually was going, uh, at the time I was auditioning, but then got accepted in New York Film Academy. So. I was like, this will stand out from the other models and actors, like this ballet and gig, like mm -hmm. uh, this would be so cool. But then I fell in love with it. And for four years, I was a manager. And um, when I decided to be like, no, no, I, I am an athlete. I have this athletic background. Mm -hmm. I have my acting background. I have my theater background. Uh, Bobby Blaze, uh, yep. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him from Smoky Mountain Wrestling. And, um, uh, in the 90s. In the 90s. and he was uh, WCW's heavyweight champion, yeah? No, no. Yeah. No, no. Smoky Mountain's WCW. heavyweight champion. Okay. Oh, yeah, I remember. And he was a WCW superstar. Well, he pulled me to the side, and he's been my mentor ever since. So okay. he was like, kid, like, you can do this. You have the look. You have, you, you have the athletic background, the acting mm -hmm. background. You have the stage presence. He's like be a wrestler and i was just like okay and so that's when i got involved with funaki okay. and i was with him for just under a year and then that's when he had his own school right now he's with hybrid school which okay. if you guys want to check it out in san antonio texas he's actually with them now and they're a phenomenal school and i'm actually going to see them next month so oh, uh, nice. I'm, not making, I'm not making too big of announcements but i am going to stop by and see my old coach and then also see uh the facility and uh coach uh marvel coach marvel oh, so nice. I, i'm going to be able to see them again so that's going to be cool but uh cool. 
I trained under Funaki uh, for just under a year, and then it was it's kind of funny. Uh, so the way I met Rikishi, uh, he had a show during WrestleMania for his own school, and uh, it was so his school's in LA, but WrestleMania was in Dallas, Texas uh, that year. So it was like two thousand. Yeah. yeah. WrestleMania 32, Nathaniel says. Well, yeah, he, yeah. He's my he encyclopedia. The year Sting went in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, okay. So, so set, set this up. So, <laughs> I'm just a young kid, you know. Uh, I've been training under Funaki. And a lot of wrestlers do it the wrong way, in my opinion. And whether they don't get properly trained or as they're training, they want to go out there and play superstar and go on the indies and stuff. Well, yeah. I cut off all my bookings and focused on my training for like a solid year almost. And so I wasn't out there wrestling as I trained under Funaki. I literally was just strictly training gym diet. I wanted to go to WWE, you know? Yeah. So, so scene set up. WrestleMania, Dallas. Here I am in the parking lot seeing all these big banners. Wow. And there's this like building that's in the parking lot, like dead ass, like right on it. And there's a little wrestling show being uh, performed in, in, in the park. Right, it's like right in uh, across from the AT&T Stadium. Yeah. And that's where I was and met my coach Rikishi. And I was just like, hi, you know, and uh, hey, like awesome. people want to talk about paying your dues. Mm -hmm. I, I did ask was offered to be on the show as a wrestler. And I was like, nope, don't got my gear. I'm training under Funaki. Then I was offered to manage and valet, and I was like, listen, I will help set up. I like I always turned down bookings when I felt like I was not ready for it. So so I was the bell girl. Okay. I was the bell girl. I was like, you know what? I'll do that. I'll pay my dues and I'll ding the bell. I'm good. Oh. I don't need to be a superstar yet. So so uh, paying your dues, so to speak, and like uh uh meeting uh Rikishi, he's like, you know what, kids? Uh, he was speaking to Nathaniel and I. Uh, he's like, I want you to come to LA to our school. So uh, we ended up packing up, going to LA, and Nathaniel and I both, for seven months, slept out of our vehicle in the daytime because our shoot job yeah. was night shift. And it will <laughs> remain nameless, but it uh, we worked in this big facility with like trucks and stuff and like unloading. But uh, Nathaniel and I, would work our shoot job, work night shift, get into LA traffic, go to Planet Fitness, okay. work out, shower. On and sleep on. In our, sleep in our vehicle for maybe like three hours. We had no, we were poor. We were poor little kids. We, okay. our air conditioning would not work in our vehicle. We couldn't <laughs> leave it running because we couldn't afford the gas anyway. So we would be so scared people were gonna like kill us, you know? Uh, we were in the city and we would park and we would, okay. So Planet Fitness doesn't let you use the parking lot, but unless you're a member and uh, especially the one right there in Burbank. Uh, so not that we were advocates for Planet Fitness, but we took the stickers and plastered <laughs> our vehicle to let people know we're members so we wouldn't get towed. And so here we are sleeping in the broad daylight next to the Burbank Airport in LA with fucking Planet Fitness stickers all over our vehicle so we wouldn't get in trouble. And we would try to, no air conditioning, it was hot as fuck. Uh, we would try to, and I have video footage of this, it's all over my social media, cause you know, there's a lot of fucking, there's a lot of liars in this business and you gotta, <laughs> you gotta document everything. Cause I, dude, like I've done so much weird shit for the business. Like people be like, there's no way you're lying. Like that's an insane story. It's like, no, I filmed it. Cause I knew you bitches wouldn't believe it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. so, so I did it, you know, instead of like playing politics or playing games or sleeping my way to the business, I did us slept in my vehicle for almost a solid year, spent thousands oh, of dollars to train in LA and my shoot job was night shift. So I had to sleep in the daytime. I got sun poisoning sun or sun. whatever. So, uh, and in LA, they lock up bathrooms, especially at night and you have to get the key. Uh, 
well, I didn't have access to toilets and say it was like my off day and it was like 3 a.m. and I didn't have a toilet. I didn't, I wasn't at work. I didn't have oh. access to go to my, uh, my job. I didn't have access to go to uh, a toilet. So I dead ass had a shit in a cup. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Yeah. That's like awesome. dead it's ass. Insane. I had to like squat and get one of those McDonald's styrofoam cups. <laughs> <and> like, oh. <laughs> I had, oh, I had sun poisoning. I was homeless. And I was like, I have no family, no friends. I'm shitting in a cup of fucking diarrhea. And I'm becoming a professional wrestler training. And this is going to be an insane story to tell. We're very dedicated for your passion, you know. I, and... I would, like, school was so expensive. And living mm. was so expensive. And I barely had enough money for food, gas, and paying for school. So there were times that I would be working my, my manual labor job on night shift, going to the gym, trying to be a bodybuilder, trying to eat healthy, sleeping in my vehicle <clears throat> in the daytime, then going and getting up. And before going to my shoot job, I would go to Rikishi's, train for like three hours. And I'm not trying to put myself over, but fuck it. I'm going to talk about it. So when you show up at, uh, his school uh there's a cleaning list and before class starts see we clean before the class and then mm -hmm. we have the class and everyone leaves so then when you come into the school you got to clean up so you have fresh bleach mats and everything and everything's sanitary mm -hmm. well nathaniel and i being homeless and say we got like two hours of sleep in our vehicle we would drive from planet fitness to our school at knox pro we would get there and we're like, God, we got to go to our shoot job. We got to go to our shoot job like right after class. Class gets out at 9 p.m. We got to be at our shoot job at 10. It's like, got to get in L.A. traffic. So we'd get antsy for class to start. So this is no shame to anyone at all. This is just me like speaking my truth. Nathaniel and I would get the cleaning sheet and we would just go. Because it was supposed to be like, okay, Paige, you scrub the toilet. Uh, <laughs> Emily, you do this. Amber, you do this. Nate, you do this or whatever. Nate and I would just do the whole chores before all the students would get there almost every day, every day, <laughs> just so we'd be like, okay, let's start class, let's go. And, uh, but it was just, it was a raw experience getting to learn under these people. And uh, I, I did exactly what you hear these, these crazy wrestling stories. I did it. I did what you were supposed to do to become a professional wrestler. And uh, unfortunately, uh, when, I was out at Rikishi's. Um, I sustained an injury that put me in a wheelchair. And Rikishi, like, I got to put myself over for a moment, like, because it's really emotional. Uh, but Rikishi got me in front of everyone is like, this kid is a fucking wrestler. And I was just like, tears in my eyes. You know, I've sustained an injury. I'm in pain. And I'm like, I, ha I did all this. I did everything you were supposed to do. I, I didn't suck dick. I didn't, uh, I didn't play the politics and backstab people to get a spot. I, oh. uh, I, I didn't do all this shit. You know exactly what it is. <laughs> Wait, we what? Are, yeah, we know exactly what it is. You, you yeah. know how it is. Yeah. So, so if you don't no make with the right person and you are not with the, and you don't. No shame to the right towards person. the men and women that do it. You know? You're a former wrestler. And probably it's, it, was probably um, mostly hard when you were a woman, you know. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. But honestly, whether it's guys or girls doing it, you do you, boo. Like I don't judge people on their lifestyles, like whatever. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. I, yeah. I, I, I did the the freaking story of. Oh. Uh, oh wait, you get paid to do this? Like you know, when I was a valet, I was the dumbass that would show up four <laughs> hours before the show would start and help build the ring, mm -hmm. and then I'd stay like two, three hours after the show to help tear down. I'd be there at two a.m. Dude, like when you drive You're one so way, ten hours, hot yeah. dog and handshake, you get twenty bucks, and then ten hours back. Are you fucking kidding me? I did that. Uh, then I was like, you know what? We know exactly, once again, uh, we know exactly what it is because me and my partner had a, a wrestling uh, promotion in Quebec during uh, seven years. We organized 
uh, around 40 to 50 wrestling shows per year. And yeah. honestly, uh, that's a that's a pain in the ass because the, the, the reputation, <laughs> uh, the backstabbing, the, yeah. uh, uh, you work, uh, you are the first arrived uh, for the show. And you are the last one, uh, yeah. and you and you close the doors and wrestling talents. Many uh, many egos in the in the yes, business. Yes, exactly. And wrestling talents arrive at uh, 6 p.m. Everything is clean. Everything <laughs> is is built, and he uh, he doing uh, the wrestling match, and after he leaves, but. Behind all of this, there's a a, a quiet teams yep. who work so hard, and that's yeah. very interesting. You're talking about that, you know? And yeah, and like in wrestling, it's called you know like paying your dues in a mm -hmm. sense. And when you're the green kid, when you're the upcoming wrestler, you're supposed to join the ring exactly. crew. You're supposed exactly. to. We're supposed. To we're supposed to go and be a part of that so we can work the ground up. You got to be the janitor be before you become the CEO. That's how it always exactly. was explained to me. So I never realized how abusive it was. Like I didn't realize that the booker shouldn't take photos of me, m me model for them for free. And then them to sell my photos and they take the whole profit. Yeah, I didn't know that. I was 18 years old, and these grown adults were doing that to me. So not I, uh, I've learned, and I educated myself. In, uh, in the U.S., in US 21. Yeah, 21 years old in U.S., of course. And, uh, Ontario is 19. Yes, uh, Ontario is 19. Quebec is 18. And in U.S. is 21, so you, you are not major, you know. You were not oh. major. You have, you, How old you are have, you? Just, uh, uh, oh, when, that was when I got involved with the business, and yeah. I was in... 2011. Uh, okay. Okay. That, okay. I was yeah. I was it, I was 18 in 2000. Uh, okay. Back in 2011. So yeah. yeah. I. Oh, I you're 31. Okay. Uh, yeah. I actually I'm 32. I, I'm a 32. 1992's baby. <laughs> oh baby. Yeah. But that that's perfect because when you wear uh, when you will have uh, 60 years old, you will you, you will look like 40. That's oh perfect. thanks. Yeah. I always. Uh, I always got that, and I, I, I don't know. I don't care about aging. Like I know it's so taboo. Like there's some men and women that are like, "Oh no, I'm in my 30s," and I'm like, "Eh, it's fun. I don't. I exactly. like getting older. I, I think it's fun aging. I don't want to be a kid anymore." <laughs> yeah, and uh, just uh, to be sure, uh, I have uh, just a simple question: Is your chance of queen gimmick your own idea? Yes and no. Okay. okay. Okay, backstory. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, okay, so when I got involved with wrestling, I was just that actor, and I was like, I don't want to have a, a stripper's name. I don't want to have mm -hmm. a gimmick where I'm just the eye candy. I want to yeah. be taken seriously or whatever. And yeah. so my 18-year-old brain came up with uh, the Black Dahlia. Yeah. So, so, so the way I came up with that was I'm a huge fan of horror and true crime. And are you guys familiar with the Black Dahlia murder? No, no, sorry. You don't know about that? What about no. you? You? Oh, no, 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 Black, no. Uh, Black Dahlia. No, you're not familiar. Oh, Black Dahlia is a is a is an old uh, old name. Yeah. Is yeah. A, yeah it's not a, it's not a wizard. She, she's a wizard. She was a wizard. Like no. no, no, ah, you guys don't know. How do you not oh, know? I, 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 you don't know? Um, How do you not know? Oh, How do you not know? She, she a, How she, do you not know? Oh, the Black Dahlia murder. No, the, the Black Dahlia murder. How do know. you not know? <laughs> <laughs> Black Dahlia murder is a, is a band. I tried to add a dramatic effect and now it just is upside down. Okay, whatever. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Elizabeth Short was the Black Dahlia. Just, you don't cheat. Don't Google. Don't Google. <laughs> You're a naughty boy. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, uh, seriously. Uh, okay. Okay. So, you know that. Okay. For, for the Canadian.
Canadians that don't know. Now yeah. you're going to know. So this <laughs> is a true story. <laughs> this is a, don't laugh. This is a true story. Okay. Set up. <laughs> it is LA. Yeah. The 1930s. Okay. A young girl. Beautiful. Her name was Elizabeth Short, and she just wanted to be an actor, right? Okay. So okay. she goes to LA, runs into probably some wrong people, then scene change. A mom is pushing her baby in one of those little carriages. It's like a park or whatever. Uh, the year is 1947, okay. and she sees what appears to be a mannequin doll. Like, you know, in the shop windows, like the, mm -hmm. the, the, oh, uh, how do I say that? You know what I'm talking about? Like with that, where's the clothes? Yeah, it's like a, a, in, in Amsterdam, like uh, with the windows, you know? So. Yeah, yeah, but they're like plastic dolls. Yeah. Mannequins. So, so she's like, oh, there's a, a shop doll, right? It was an actual woman's body, and uh, she calls the cops, right? Okay. Well, when the cops arrive, they see this woman's body. She's completely nude, and she's sawed in half. And her body's completely detached from oh. the middle, and her breasts are slit, and her nipples are, like, removed. Holy and then everyone thinks it's the fucking Joker smile, but it's not. So uh, it's the Black Dahlia smile. Okay. So the, her murderer uh, slit her mouth so she had a permanent smile. Okay. And everyone's like, who is this beautiful woman? What, who do, what monster does this? It was really shocking. It'd be yeah. shocking to see this nowadays, but in the 1940s, this was like, holy. Yeah, this was before serial killers like were known. And people <laughs> like, so... So everyone's like, who did this to this beautiful girl? And uh, it was so dark, they labeled it black. But she was so beautiful, like the flower, they named her Dahlia. So this woman that was unknown was named the Black Dahlia Murder. And oh, wow. then she was identified as Elizabeth. And she was just that young girl that uh, wanted to be an actor. And she was allegedly quoted to say, I want to be famous. And now she is famous. I don't want to expose myself and tell them that. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys. So, listen. So, when <laughs> I lived in L.A., I totally did not maybe kind of sort of Googled the exact location of where her body was found. And I kind of sort of maybe possibly went and laid in the exact spot. Oh, okay. That's... And took, and took photos. There, there is no photos on the internet. Uh, there, there's oh, 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 oh. Uh, they didn't like it her, because her, no, 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 her, her probably yeah, not because you do, unfortunately, you, if you, you do, said do, that was a 1947, and there that are, very, there are, and they are, unfortunately they are very graphic. Years ago. Wow. Yeah, like you will it, trigger guys. Like if you do Google the Black Dahlia, you will see all of her photos. <laughs> And you will see her body and her face. It's unfortunate. So trigger warning. And then also you will see um, the Black Dahlia murder. It's a rock band that named after her. And then I should pop up. And then I think for like one year. See, I've been the Black Dahlia. I was the first ever in wrestling. But I think maybe one British girl did it for like a year. Mm -hmm. But I was the first one. So who cares? <laughs> Awesome. And we uh, recently saw you as a manager for the son of Letterface. Uh, I'm talking about Evil Nate. And you, uh, brought, and you brought him a chainsaw. So what is your future plan with this alliance? Right, right. Okay, so I before I got hurt at Rikishi's, I was just the Black Dahlia, right? Yeah. And Rikishi is all about gimmick. Yeah. And one of the things he spoke to me about was what do I want to do in wrestling? And I told him, as long as I just live a comfortable life and wrestle, I don't care. But he really pushed uh, for his students to go to WWE. He really says, no, you nice. want, that's where you need to go. So that's where I started focusing on that before I got hurt. And then with gimmick, 
this was 2016 and, and then 2017. Uh, he, they wanted to put a Native American gimmick on me. And, okay. and I was like, okay, guys, like I'm mixed. And I, I feel like, um, I feel like that's a little whitewashing. <laughs> Shut are up. You, are you Native American? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm. Yeah, uh, oh, interesting. Yeah, no, I'm mixed. And, okay, uh, you're a no. mixed. Okay, okay. Yeah, we, so, uh, we recently so, received yeah. uh, Chris Chavis, aka Tatanka, during uh, our podcast. Season four. Yes, during the season four. The first episode of season four. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I, I worked with Tatanka a couple times in Texas, and then I also, during WrestleMania weekend, yeah, uh, I we was fighting with him. I was oh, he's a good guy. Him. Yes, he's a very good guy. He's so nice. So yeah. nice. Uh, he's always he's always a good guy. But uh, yeah, so like I feel like where I didn't grow up on a reservation or in a res or where I'm not full blooded, I I just it made me a little uncomfortable. And I didn't discuss this with them, of course. Like I didn't mm -hmm. talk to them about it. I just was like, I really like my black Dahlia gimmick. And they're like, Well, that's a yeah. flower, so you can be still uh, the Dahlia flower, you know, but yeah. uh, do the native gimmick. And, I, and then they looked to Nathaniel, and Nathaniel was supposed to embrace his culture and be a hillbilly. And, and, and like, I'm talking, I dare say, it didn't, the conversation didn't get this far because I ended up getting hurt. But I was like, Nathaniel, I'm literally going to be walking out here in a whole Native American getup. And mm -hmm. uh, you're going to be walking out here in overalls. Like, I don't know what I'm going to fucking do. <laughs> like, making out with his cousins. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mrs. Page, do you think a big trip in Japan can help you for your wrestling career? Because, oh, going uh, to Japan? Yes, yes, because earlier we were talking about a letter face, and I remember couples of decades ago, there is a letter face. Uh, Was it Kapal Kachner? Uh, yes. Uh, um, Kachner. The late Wait, Kapal the Kapal Kachner, Kapal Kachner was the, the, the FMW letter over there and uh, uh wrestling fans in japan loves uh, and then the weird stuff. so do you think the that weird stuff? Yeah, the the weird weird stuff? Stuff. yeah oh man yeah that's uh, the, the uh, we actually uh, stuff. <laughs> uh, you're familiar with jason the terrible correct yeah of course uh, not the canadian one the puerto rican one that went to japan no one Jason the Terrible, he was at WrestleMania. Yeah, of course we know him. Yeah. And he uh, was in Japan a couple of years ago. He uh, um, he was friends with the which leather face? Kirschner. Okay. And uh, we just, uh, he's, uh, him and I have uh, been, he's become a mentor. That's all I could say. Okay. But, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, cool. so um, cool. the idea of going to other countries I'm not, God, I sound so narcissistic when I say this, uh, but I just, there's been people in my DMs, and the thing is, I've been sick. I've been okay. out on my injury. I've been okay. out, because, like, a lot of people don't understand that um, I did that whole insane story. I slept out of my vehicle. I starved for, like, three days because I had mm -hmm. to pay for wrestling school. I don't, you know, like, I did everything you're supposed to do to become a wrestler, became a wrestler, was put in a wheelchair, and now I have this nerve disease that was activated by my injury. I And now that I'm sick for the rest of my life with a nerve disease called CRPS, my I've never been allowed to wrestle since. Okay. So now you guys are witnessing me learning how to walk again, learning to cope. It's like a rebirth of uh, me entering the wrestling world again. So now I'm allowed to weight train. Now I am allowed to go and train and wrestle, get the ring rest off. Now I am allowed to uh, go and take a move in a wrestling ring with okay. Nathaniel. So, so these are baby steps, but I think you guys are going to see a lot of the change uh, this important. year and hopefully I'll be wrestling. Yeah. For our pre-closing -pre segment, I'll give you a name and a few words. Tell me something about them, all right? So the first one, Mickey James. Oh, what do I think about her? Yeah, yeah. just in a, oh, in a couple of words. Uh, yeah, in a couple of words. 
she's uh, also a witch to taco was actually the one that told me this. I had yeah. no idea, but she's actually mixed as well. Nice. She, she has native in her. And yeah. I think that is, she would be really cool goals to wrestle. Definitely. The second one, Roman Reigns. I think he looks like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but he's very professional and yeah. he's, he, he can back it. You know, it's one thing to be a dickhead and not be able to back it, which I don't know him. I've never met him, but, um, but uh, who trained him? Rakishi? No. Did Rakishi? No, probably his dad. His dad? I thought he went to OVW. I thought, yeah. I thought or Sika. I thought or Sika, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Uh -huh. the, the twin the twin brothers? Yes. I thought or Sika. Oh, or probably yeah. both of them. It was, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrestling promotion. Yeah. Yes, the Samoan Wrestling uh, Academy. Yes. And the Samoan Federation Wrestling. in Pennsylvania, WXW, yes. if my memory is good. Yes, exactly. Uh, the third one, um, Becky Lynch. The man. Yes, the man, Becky Lynch. Oh, I. the first thing that pops in my head is that photo of her in Japan with uh, Natalia in them. And when they were just like kids in the early, early stages of like their training. It's been a while. Like, yeah, that, what was that, like 2005 or something? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. I, I see good. that photo. I'm like, oh my god, that's so cool. They did what we're doing. So, and the last one, Black Dahlia, yourself, yourself, yourself. Uh, besides <laughs> being a hottie with a body, cutie with a booty, thong wearing, chainsaw wielding, scream queen. Um, <laughs> no, don't. Oh my god, don't do that. Ugh. Have you guys seen that promo yet online? Don't laugh. Have you seen that promo? No, not good. Yet. Good. Leave it that way. Because Nathaniel is a one-take motherfucker, and he uh, got me in front of a camera, and oh my god! Why did you guys... I don't have my eyelashes on! Shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, this fucking hillbilly over here. One minute. Where yeah. am I pointing? There? There? Yeah. yeah. So, this fucking hillbilly got me in front of a camera, Knowing I haven't cut a promo in seven years, knowing that I'm trying to understand my character, and I'm, I'm regrowing the Dahlia, I'm regrowing who is the Chainsaw Queen, and he gets me in front of the camera, and almost 70% of the promo is ab, ab lib. It's, uh, it's improv. <laughs> so okay. we just have a few highlight, like little little phrases, like okay. we're okay. talking. Like a beginning and an end, talking about the show and whatever. This motherfucker, like, you just have to honestly, like, are you gonna do it for them? Hey. That that was a weak one. <laughs> so I'm supposed to be all bubbly, uh, tits out, like, just like being ditzy and dumb. And he throws a damn, and I like, I literally almost pissed my panties. I was just like, I fucking hate you so much. <laughs> no, I'm not going to send them a link to watch that. They can find it if they want to. But uh, Nathaniel knows how to make me laugh and make me feel comfortable getting back in the business, I, I guess. And uh, for ending uh, segment, as usual, Nostradamus Ben, it's all about the French prophet. And I hope you you know uh, Nostradamus. Yeah, it's I a French prophet. He everyone. was bulking yeah. up. Like, what yeah. is that? He tried to predict the future of our guests. And I'm always right. <laughs> and it's free. It's free. Did yeah. you predict me? Please tell me you predicted me. Okay. Uh, okay, first of all, thank you so much for the interview, uh, Paige. It was uh, an experience to know you. Yes. Okay, I predicted Like a positive experience? Yeah, oh, yeah, really, yeah, really that, that was very interesting, you know. Like, a oh, very interesting. Shit. Wait a yeah. minute, wait a minute. Uh, was it me shitting in the cup that, like, kind of, like, turned you off? Like, was that it? Did I pop Yes, it? yes, but, you know, uh, we, we, <laughs> know, see, we know personally Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, and there's uh, always interesting uh uh, backstage stories, and you can imagine all stories we know that, so that's always interesting. So, which one uh, would you rank me as with the whole weird story of uh, shitting in a uh, cup? Maybe at uh, a good eight of ten, honestly. 
<laughs> yeah, that's a good eight of them. We like that. We like that. We like that. What about you? <laughs> okay, so uh, maybe in a future wrestling documentary or uh, a wrestling movie, uh, you could be perfectly the stunt double of Trish Stratus. Oh my god! Do you need to fix your glasses? Are you? Ow! Fuck! You just made me nervous. No, she's a yeah, god. You deserve it. Yeah, she you, you is amazing, because... and uh, like a fuck, like I, I, I wish, like I, any situation around her, like I would panic and probably call her mommy or something. I don't know. <laughs> like I, I would literally like be that person that like just falls for no reason. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh my <clears throat> I'll make an impression, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, what was I going to say to you guys? Crap, crap, crap. Did you predict me coming on this podcast? Did you manifest that? Yeah, why not? A, a second interview. That was that was cool. Tell me Anytime. the footage. I don't believe you and your cute French accent. All right, all right. So thank you so much for your 40 generous minutes. That was awesome. And uh, take care. All Love the you best guys. For you. Bye bye. Goodbye. Subscribe. <laughs>